Hello, my name is Ian McCall, and this is another uh, video on the Dermoscopy Made Simple series from the Australian uh, Institute of Dermatology. Tonight we're going to talk about colours in dermoscopy. Now, colours are an integral part of what you see uh, through a dermatoscope when you look at a lesion on the skin. And if we just have a little look at uh, this lesion here, here it is. Uh, here it's actually been an evus that's been transected uh, when a person's had a surgical operation. This is a surgical scar. But when you look at the lesion itself, you can see the variety of different colors here. There's black, there's brown, there's a sort of reddy brown, there's gray, and there's even some orange in there. More gray scattered here. And a bit of white. This is part of the, the scar line. Uh, where this nevus has been transected. Now it looks quite worrying, but then transected nevi often do look worrying when they come back in a, in a scar line. But it's colors we're concentrating on tonight. So what's the inference of these colors? Well, the colors that you can see. In dermoscopy, uh, we comment on these colors, black, brown, yellow, orange purple, blue, grey, red, pink, and white, if you consider white a colour. Now that's a fair spectrum of uh, colours that you're going to see in lesions. And the major thing is that black is determined usually by melanin and where it sits in the skin. We'll go into this later, but the higher up in the skin the melanin is, the blacker it is. Blood vessels, they contribute most of the reds that you're going to see in a dermatoscopic view. Dermal collagen may give you some white, but a keratin will sometimes give you white uh, as well when it's high up in the uh, epidermis, as in little retained milial cysts. But most surface keratin will be yellow, orange, or a browny black color. And surface keratin you tend to see uh, best in lesions such as seborrheic keratosis. So, Black is usually melanin and high up in the epidermis. Reds mainly blood vessels. White, usually dermal collagen, but can be uh, milial cysts, which are keratin, uh, just retained in the epidermis. And surface keratin is usually yellow or orange. So let's go and have a little look. This uh, diagram here probably shows shows things a little bit better. Black things tend to be up high here in the epidermis or even in the in the overlying stratum corneum here. Brown is where your uh, melanin is mainly down the sides of the reti ridges. When it's on the tips down here, it's uh, it's brown. The shade of brown varies with how deep it is. Gray, when you see it, that's usually due to melanin down here in melanophages in the dermis, where usually melanin that's uh, been released from melanocytes that have been attacked falls down and is taken up by scavenger cells in this area. Blue, well that's usually due to quite deep melanin uh, in the dermis and the archetypical lesion for this is probably a blue nevus. Um, there's a physical, well, there's a, an explanation called the Tyndall effect that talks of light scattering and it's the blue light that's reflected back um, from the deeper uh, melanin. So what about yellow? Yellow is usually due to serum or even some uh, keratin in the very top layers of the of the skin. White, that's usually as I've said due to collagen down here in the dermis. And red, well that's due to blood vessels deeper down here. So color is, re is related to melanin, to collagen, to blood vessels, and sometimes to surface uh, secretions. And the depth of where they are gives you the color that you see. OK, let's just uh, go over that once more. Black is due to melanocytes or melanin high up in the epidermis. Brown is due to melanocytes along the reti ridges and the nests at the tips of the reti ridges. Gray is due to melanin and melanophages in the dermis. Blue, nests of melanocytes deep in the dermis. White, 
collagen in the dermis or sometimes retain keratin high up in the epidermis in millial cysts. And yellow and orange are due to serum or keratin high in the epidermis and red to, blood and blood, uh, to the color of blood and blood vessels. Let's have a look at some lesions. Let's look at this one. So what colors uh, would you see here? Well, there's a bit of white there, there's black there, there's a bit of blue here, there's a blue-gray color uh, here, there's browns out here, there are some white lines in this uh, lesion here as well. Um, not, uh, you could say there's a bit of pink here, but you need to look closely to see if that represents blood vessels. But there's a range of colors. Let's see it on an annotated diagram. Okay, what have we got? Black from superficial uh, melanin means the melanocytes are high up in the epidermis. Grey-blue melanin in contrast because of uh, the melanin in melanophages in the dermis. So you've got this grey-blue color here. Again, black dots here indicating dots of melanin high in the epidermis and light brown melanin usually indicating that it's at the level of the dermoepidermal junction on the sides of the, of the reti ridges. And the, the color of the degree of brown depends on how deep down that, uh, those reti ridges it actually is. This was a melanoma. Let's look down. I think, yeah, this is the clinical of, uh, here we've got the clinical of that case, and this was the dermoscopy of the one we just saw. Now, you hardly need dermoscopy to compare these two. You can almost see the dermoscopy looking at this. So what you've got in here, this whitish area with the gray, this was regression. Um, and this gave rise to the gray dots that we saw. Here, the melanocytes are invading the epidermis, and therefore it's black. And here, as I said, nests of melanocytes in the reti ridges, so it equals brown. And this was an invasive melanoma. 0.4 millimeters in thickness with regression. This was the regression here, this pinky white area with the gray dots, where an immune attack has knocked off some of the melanocytes. So what about some of those other colors that uh, I spoke about? I spoke about yellow and orange. Well, this lesion is a, a seborrheic keratosis. You can see what we call orange clods, some orange clods there, orange clods there, very typical of seborrheic keratosis, some brown clods as well, and you've got these white clods. These were milia, or milia-like cysts, uh, again, retained keratin high up in the epidermis. So these are some of the colors that you can see in a seborrheic keratosis. As I say, the yellows, the orange, sometimes the white milia. And other times you may have a lesion like this where color is really your only friend. This was a lesion on a lady's back, a new pink lesion. She's got various nevi here, but there was this pink lesion. But it didn't, uh, there wasn't an awful lot uh, about it looking at it. You might think, oh, it's a basal cell skin cancer. But when you put the dermatoscope on it, what you then start to see are these various dot vessels, and these aren't the vessels of a basal cell skin cancer, and some of these linear irregular vessels. Now certainly you can get branching vessels in a, um, or what we call serpentine, in a basal cell skin cancer, but linear irregular vessels like this, coupled with dot vessels, makes it uh, the lesion very suggestive of being an amelanotic melanoma. But of course, this one has a slight little rim of pigmentation here at one edge, which uh, helps to perhaps alert you that perhaps this is mainly a, a melanocytic lesion, but it's an amelanotic uh, melanoma. So the red color, the red and the nature of the vessels can be very useful in these uh, pink lesions in alerting you to what they might be. So colors. Very important in uh, dermoscopy, important because they give you information as to the level of the uh, melanocytes, can give you an idea of the nature of uh, a melanocytic lesion, 
can be helpful in diagnosing seborrheic keratosis. And sometimes the red of blood vessels can be the integral to a diagnosis of an amelanotic melanoma. So colours and dermoscopy, an important thing to grasp and an important topic to cover. Thank you very much.